Hello there. Um, my name's Glenn Artstuffs, um, and uh, you know, uh, over the past few days, I've just kind of uh, been kind of messing around with just uh, very quick sketches. Um, did I just say my name is Glenn Artstuffs? That's the channel name. My name's Glenn, obviously. Um, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, over the past few days, I've just been messing around with kind of quick sketches. And when I say quick sketches, I mean uh, I mean not using a pencil because, uh, I don't know, I think uh, I find working with a pencil to be not very fun. I like to I like to start to work in other mediums. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so when I was doing this first one, I was kind of feeling a bit uh, sick and ill, and you know, just didn't want to get into anything kind of too serious. So I just decided to pick up my watercolors and just start sketching with the uh, with the yellow watercolor, and then I put some uh, some yellow ochre on just to just to I don't know, try and tidy up some of the yellow a little bit, and then I went over with a fine liner and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just putting in some wood detail with the uh, with some brown india ink there some some sepia brown india ink um doing doing some shadow shadow detail with kind of like a that's a sort of warm brownish kind of uh, um watercolor on this on the on the 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 ceiling and things and it's gone too fast to be honest for me to break down every single color that i'm using but yeah i was just trying to create an atmosphere here this is supposed to be like a a medieval inn you know like kind of um i'd seen like a youtube video of someone talking about medieval inns and it uh it kind of gave us the idea to to do a picture of the sort of the bedroom area of like a medieval inn and uh and this is what i came up with uh once again this took us about an hour to do which is just quite fast for me um so it, it really isn't like a, a serious painting um but it's uh i quite like it and i could maybe turn it into a serious painting if i wanted to if i wanted to kind of come back to the idea um at a later date Just been doing some sketches, uh, just from imagination, um, not thinking about it too much. Um, using a, a, a fine liner pen. Um, oh, keep on knocking the camera when I'm getting the stuff out. <laughs> um, using this pen, um, which I'll mention in a bit. This is the uh, the Peter draws Peter pen. <laughs> Um, the Peter Draws Peter Pen. Yeah, um, I had been thinking about getting a fountain pen for a while. Um, this is actually my uh, my first ever proper fountain pen. Um, and uh, the main person responsible for making me want to buy a fountain pen was uh, the YouTuber Peter Draws. Um, I uh, I really like his channel. Um, I find his art uh, pretty interesting, and uh, I also really get a lot of inspiration from like the way that he presents his art um, in his YouTube videos and things. I think um, it uh, it's a good demonstration of like you know of of, of I don't know, just a just a, a a a good way of presenting your art on YouTube. You know, just just um, doing something that kind of matches your own personality. You know, I like that. Um, so anyway, yeah, here's a this is a clip of me unboxing the Peter Rose Peter Pen, um, and uh, yeah, I used that in some of my uh, my artwork, as you'll see in a bit. And I think it's a good pen. Yeah, some. Uh, sepia tone india ink um some of this stuff um which is hold on i'll just take it out of its out of its packet it. 
Nudler's ink, um, which is a uh, fountain pen ink. So it's uh, it's different from uh, from India ink. Um, and it says on the packet, uh, the only eternal black ink, bulletproof on, <laughs> on cellulose paper, yet washes off plastic with water. Water-based ink made in the USA, always pH neutral. Um, so apparently it's bulletproof. That's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't really know whether... It actually is bulletproof. I mean, I, I would, I would highly doubt that an ink would make something bulletproof. But you know, whatever. Um, I don't think you meant to believe that it's bulletproof. I don't think they're actually trying to scam people into thinking that it's bulletproof. I think it's maybe just, I don't know, an expression or a joke or something. But but here's some more indie ink, uh, ultramarine. Blue. Then we've got uh, some uh, some deep red, rouge red. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, some uh, some peat, peat brown. Hang on, I'll take that out of the. I'll take these out of the boxes as well, so you can see them. Peat brown, and that's got a nice picture of a flower pot on it. Um, and then, of course, we have as well uh, black. We always need some some black ink, black black India ink. Yeah. Uh, so this black ink is different to this black ink because this black ink isn't India ink, and you can't put it inside a fountain pen. No, sorry, no, this black ink is not India ink, and you can put it inside a fountain pen, whereas this black ink is India ink, and you can't put it in a fountain pen. Um, and then I've also got some uh, vermilion uh, red ink, uh, which is... It looks like this from outside outside of the box um and I believe that that is different to uh to this one well i well I know that that's different to this one because I've used them both um and this is a slightly darker deeper red as it says on the on the package whereas this one is uh lighter and more kind of orangey red should we say i don't know a warmer warmer red that's the phrase that's the phrase um so based on that idea um what i just decided to do was um by the way when i say based on that idea i mean based on the idea of just that kind of quick sketch and starting out with the watercolor uh, what i tried decided to do was these two pictures which as you can see i kind of just basically sketched out something with some yellow there on this one and then I switched to a different one there um, now we've come back to this one because um, it's uh, dried in the time it took us to uh, to um, sketch the other one and I've, I've just I'm just kind of coming in with a fountain pen here um, that's actually the uh, the Peter draws Peter pen fountain pen which is a cool fountain pen I like it I've uh, I've bought it recently and I might, I might even like, I actually, I actually videoed like an unboxing video for that. I might actually include that in this video somewhere. I don't, I'm not sure where. Um, but yeah, um, this one actually, you know, the, I was, I was quite happy with this one when I, when I, when I did it. Um, what I'm doing there is I'm going in with some black India ink just to kind of black out the, uh, the, uh, Obviously, they're meant to be looking out of the window into space. Um, what I had done with these pictures was I had I had looked I had I had got like a random word generator on 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 the internet, and I had just kind of generated some random words to use as inspiration for my sketch. And uh, the word for this one was approach. Um, 
So the thing I got in my head, you know, straight away was just, you know, a science fiction thing with people like approaching a planet. Um, I had quite a lot of fun with that. I like science fiction, so it was quite a lot of fun just drawing uh, a sci-fi set up here. Um, took a bit longer on this one. Uh, these sketches was mainly supposed to be kind of pretty much like just hour long sketches, but this one, uh, this one took a bit longer. As you can see, I've I've, I've done a lot more kind of texture in and things on the on the on the the ceiling of the spaceship and stuff and you know things like that it just takes a little bit longer um but yeah it was a it was a fun fun sketch um and um but i wasn't just using uh inks i was also using uh some watercolors as well uh this is my watercolor palette um, and I don't know if you can see the colors in there I've got a, a, a few colors in there I've got some that I never use uh, so it's not the most practical of palettes in the world I never use this one, I never use this one never use this one never, never use this one um, the ones I use is uh, this here. This uh, this is a phalo blue. It's kind of like a cold, cold blue. Uh, very very. Um, how do you how do you phrase it? Um, very. <coughs> very. <coughs> no. Um, very. I don't know, I would say very, very bright and saturated and crazy, you know, whereas uh, this blue over here, this one, which you can't really see very well in this light, this is an ultramarine blue, which is a uh, more of a sensible blue, like more of a, a warm blue. What do I mean by warm blue? I mean, uh, I mean when you mix it with other colours, it uh, creates a warmer tone. Um, that's what people tend to be referring to when they refer to colours as being, well, when they refer to a blue as being a warm blue or a cold blue. Uh, you know, um, blue is a cold colour, obviously, but. Uh, you know, when you mix it with other colours, um, it can be slightly warmer than some other blues, uh, and that's why he would call it a warm blue. Um, I was a bit disappointed. I, I found out that those drawing inks, those Winsor & Newton drawing inks, which the, the colour on... The colour on that picture was, was Winsor & Newton drawing inks. Um, most of it anyway. There was some watercolor there as well. Um, but I've I've found out that those Windsor and Newton drawing inks aren't aren't actually permanent. They're actually they they're what you call fugitive, which means they they're likely to change color over time, um, which is disappointing. Um, anyway, yeah, I've come back to this uh, sketch here. Um, once again, yeah, you saw me start this before because I was kind of I was tag teaming these sketches. I wasn't just working on them all and one after the other. I was kind of working on them at the same time um, and swapping them over. So uh, this one was also the inspiration was also from a random word generator, um, and the word was rage. So I just kind of thought of like you know someone in an office just going crazy. So this guy's kind of lifting the lifting the chair up over his head. Um, this picture kind of went in a different direction to uh, what I thought it would. And as you could see there, um, what I did was I actually um, like just physically just cropped the top of it. Like I just, um, the there was one change that I made off camera, which was uh, I just lightened, I just kind of basically, um, I had put yellow ochre in the in the 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 lights that you can see in the ceiling, and it was drawn too much. 
attention to the to those lights so i just went and you know d dabbed some of that out just to just to you know just to take the attention away from them a little bit and then i and then what you saw at the end of the clip there is i just literally like um got a pair of scissors and just like basically cropped the top off uh did that so that i could make the composition the, the sorry the composition uh better i wanted this to have better composition it's uh it's ended up being quite a graphic uh a graphic picture um end up using some uh quite opaque gouache for the uh for the face and the the body and stuff uh and i wasn't i wasn't that keen on this picture when i'd first finished it but i've grown to like it a little bit more after that um still still not one of my favorites though but you know it's all right <clears throat> it's very graphic the same with red red is a warm color but uh when you mix it with other colors it can give you colder results in which case it would be a cold red um so like a crimson or a magenta magenta isn't technically red but it mixes like a red um those are cold reds whereas vermilion which is the red that i have inside this uh watercolor box here that is a warmer red um and uh, cadmium red which is the red that i tend to use when i'm oil painting that's also a warmer red um i also have a uh, i forget which yellow this is but it's one that i think would be considered a, a a colder yellow obviously once again yellow is a a warm color but uh, when you mix it with uh, other colors it can uh, generate um, sorry I was just checking the sound monitor it can generate colder results um, Although that's a bit, I don't know, whatever. Um, I've also got sap green. So for this one, well, you see, one of the issues with the the last one I did was that yellow that I had used to kind of sketch. I felt like that was just getting into every other colour and making every single other colour like green and and it just I don't know, it was annoying us. So for this one what I did is I um started out just doing a sketch in a kind of uh, a kind of greyish toned watercolour and um and yeah I'm I'm tag teaming these sketches as well. Um like just doing like an under under painting for this one while I'm waiting for that the ink the the watercolor to dry for the other one um the word here was joy so i just thought of like a like a hippie woman in a field <laughs> um <clears throat> yeah i got that gray color for the, from the watercolor oh right and here yeah i've just included some actual real time footage with sound in it And the reason I've kept that in is because I was actually on the phone to um, my old energy company in a place that I used to live in like four years ago. My old flat that I used to live in four years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, I had a bit of a funny tenancy company who never let me see the electricity meter, which I've since found out is... It's illegal, like, you know, you have to let your tenants see the electricity meter, um, and anyway, turns out there was a reason why he didn't want us to see the electricity meter, and that's because um, he wanted to charge me for electricity that wasn't being used by me, um, but anyway, I don't want to go into that too deeply, um, but... Um, but yeah, this is just to demonstrate. Yeah, I'm on the I'm on the phone 
to uh, to an energy company who thinks that I owe them money that I can't afford to pay them um, and that I don't owe to them um, while I'm painting this but you know just to kind of say like you know life isn't so bad you know so even even when things like that happen that that might stress you out you know you just kind of get on with things you know just just paint a picture and uh, you know things aren't so bad you know um but um yeah um but anyway yeah so this this picture i ended up being fairly happy with this picture the the uh, the word here was a uh, literacy uh so decided i just thought of like a random like you know 17th century guy sitting at a writing desk uh writing with like a feather quill um because this this painting's different this the the word here was joy oh i think i've already told you that um yeah now <laughs> the painting with that woman in the field i don't know what where that was going it was going in a crazy direction that i really wasn't aware of but uh yeah I just came back here with the fountain pen putting in some outlines and stuff uh some more detail under the floor um this picture i didn't say before but um it has a lot of um it has a lot of noodlers fountain penning um i was uh i was putting like the if you if you look at the kind of the shadow and the lighting around the floor um that's um that's a lot of like noodlers uh noodlers fountain pen ink which i just used to kind of create atmosphere and sort of lighten design there um and um put a lot of brown on the walls with that uh that windsor and newton drawn ink um and then kind of went over that with uh with the yellow when i was putting the watercolor on um um burnt sienna stripes on the wall and things like that uh yeah um Left a little bit of a, a white thing around the candle. Um, just wanted to create some atmosphere there, some atmosphere with the lighting and stuff. Uh, yeah, I was quite fond of this picture. You know, it's just a sketch, but like I said about the the medieval one, you know, it's one that I could come back to and maybe turn into a proper painting if I wanted to in the future. You know, which is the whole point in this uh, this whole series of pictures that I'm covering in this video. Um, which I don't know is, I mean that's always fun, isn't it? That one to use. Not much uh, technical to say about that one, other than just it's fun. Um, I've got here, um, uh, burnt sienna. Um, it looks a bit weird because I tend to use this white gouache here. This white gouache here to uh, to to kind of brush across one side of it to make like a skin tone, um, but then I'll leave one side of it, you know, un untouched by the white, so that I can use the pure burnt sienna, or I can use the more skin tone uh, burnt sienna mixed with white gouache, um, and then obviously. As I've just said, I've got the white glass there, which is just squeezed out of a tube into the. I've also got uh, some uh, some black glass there, which is just squeezed out of a tube. Once again, I never use that one, or rarely anyway. Um, it's a very opaque black, obviously, because it's gouache, not watercolor. And uh, I've also got a, a black watercolor there as well um, and I've got burnt umber which is a color that I really like both in oil paint and in watercolor um, is that all the colors that I've gotten here yeah, have I been through them all um, yeah pretty much um, um, and uh, yeah, this one here. Um, I'm not. I'm not that fond of this one. To be fair, I'm not that fond of this picture. Um, you know, I think it's uh, it's very, very, very rough and loose. That picture. I mean, they're all very rough and loose, but this one's kind of rough and loose in a way that I'm not not quite as sure about. But 
Eh, I don't know. I don't know. It's all, it's, it's all right. It's all right. I probably won't come back to it, to this one, though, in a, in a proper painting, because, like, I don't know, it's a bit of a, like, one of those kind of crappy sort of inspirational memes or something. Um, most of the time when I'm painting watercolours, I'll use one of these water brushes, but uh, that's because a lot of the time when I'm painting with them, I'm either just wanting to do something very quick, in which case uh, I uh, don't want to carry around a, a, a cup of water because that would make me uh, quite uh, conspicuous. Um, but for these sketches, I was sitting at my desk at my drawing board, so I just got this, which is just a normal round-headed brush. Um, and uh, you can kind of get a sort of a point from the end of this, so it isn't too bad. It's not too much of a bad uh, brush to use, even though it's a quite big. It's better to use a little bit of a bigger brush for watercolour, I think, because the smaller brushes don't really hold very much water. Um, and, uh, and plus, I'm always putting ink and ink from pens onto uh oh, just drop that on the floor there um onto my pictures so you know sometimes uh I don't need to do the detail with my, my watercolour brush so therefore just a basic brush like that is fine and I also use this brush a little bit for when I was wanting to cover larger areas with watercolour but uh, neither of those brushes are particularly expensive or fancy fancy um, so I just you know they were the brushes that I could get my hands on so um, yeah um, that's the stuff that I was using for the sketches so enjoy seeing me do the sketches hope you enjoy um and what else am i gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna also 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 record a, an outro for this video i think i think i'm gonna say uh if you like the video, then I'm yeah I'm gonna do that thing that YouTubers always do. Uh, if you like this video, then please click the the thumbs up, please click the thumbs up and uh, give it a, a like. Um, and also uh, click the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel. And also click the bell, ding, 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 and then you'll get notified of all of my new videos. Um, yeah, and uh, my YouTube views have been on a bit of a downward dip at the minute. Um, I've went from getting about a hundred views per video to getting about ten views per video, so you know that's always fun. Um, so yeah, if you uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll be uh, you'll be uh, you'll be helping me out, uh, and click clicking the bell will help me out because it seems like I don't know for whatever reason YouTube doesn't trust my channel to to keep people on the on the YouTube's anymore. So uh, it's not recommending my videos to people anymore. So uh, so yeah. Click the bell or you won't know what's going on. Um, indeed. Um, but anyway, yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. It's been nice to see you. And uh, I will uh, I will wish you a happy goodbye. And uh, a nice day, a nice night, a nice whatever time it is that you're watching this. Um, and of course a nice life as well because we all deserve happiness. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, anyway, goodbye. But yeah, that's that's uh, that's all of the pictures there. Um, tell me which one you like the best. You know, uh, leave a comment, um, and then uh, you know what it is. I think I've already recorded a, something for this video that tells people to like and subscribe and all that kind of thing. Uh, so this might end up just being a repeat of that. Um, if it is, I'm I'm sorry, but I'm gonna kind of say the the usual YouTuber stuff again, um, which is uh, you know uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, click the bell icon. Um, in the words of uh, of Phoebe Buffet, uh, watch out for anything that uh, you could fall into or could fall on onto you, you know, um, no, that's not the quote, is it, could fall on you, sorry, uh, um, you know, take care of yourself, uh, don't do any dangerous driving, you know, don't, uh, don't eat any pasta behind the wheel, um, sounds like a weird thing, but, uh, I, I was actually in a band with a guy who used to do that, he used to eat pasta behind the wheel, um, and he once gave me a lift, um, while he was eating pasta behind the wheel, and he uh, took both of his hands off the steering wheel to uh, to 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 mess around with his pasta, um, and also, you know, decided to look straight down at his pasta. Um, so he was like not watching the road, with no hands on the steering wheel, and uh, the car drifted onto the other side of the road. Um, we were listening to a jazz radio station, and uh, just at the point of the uh, the saxophone solo, when the uh, when the the band had reached its full intensity, um, and the saxophone was just screeching out uh, intense lines, um, a uh, a car um, drove towards us on the uh, on the other side of the road, which we were also on because we went on the right side of the road and uh and uh yeah it nearly hit where but luckily just before it hit where uh, the guy decided to look at the road again and uh pulled the car back onto the the correct side of the road again um and uh that's the reason why i'm not dead um so yeah uh don't eat pasta behind the wheel um Look after yourselves. Um, if there's anything upsetting you, um, you know, try and try and uh, try and try and uh, not to n not to let it uh, depress you too much. You know, um, try and uh, one thing that helps actually is to to try and uh, see if you can kind of associate your emotions with. A kind of a part of your body you know like maybe if you sometimes when you feel emotions you can kind of try and think like oh okay so I, I feel like as though this emotion is coming from my stomach and then that might make you think like oh well maybe I should eat something then or something you know what I mean I don't know sometimes but other times it doesn't you know tell you that you need to eat something but sometimes it just helps to kind of associate your mental feelings with uh with physical parts of the body i don't i don't know um i don't know what the hell this has to do with uh with like you know subscribing uh to my videos on my channel but uh but yeah um just thought i would throw in a little bit of advice there i don't know um um but uh, but yeah, the the views on my videos have been going down quite recently. Actually, they've been uh, um, reducing. I think I don't think YouTube share my content as much anymore, which is which is all right. I'm not going to sit here and complain about the YouTube algorithm or anything because that's a bit of a I don't know a dead end. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know it's worth uh, worth clicking the bell icon because you probably won't find out about my videos. If uh, if you don't do that, so um. <laughs> Christ, this is a long outro, isn't it? What the hell am I doing? Um, 
and I think there's another outro which I've recorded for this video as well anyway so anyway yeah anyway um, goodbye um, and uh, much love